Yo, yo. So I got a question from somebody on the uh, YouTubes. So hi, Steph. Hi, Uncle Steph. I am currently at the early stages of learning to code. He doesn't have a degree. I am 55 and want to change careers, and I've given myself a two-year limit to uh, transition to the new career. He wants to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then hopefully Python. He paid a small fortune, 4000 for a boot camp, and he has one year to complete it. The trouble with these courses is that they are the same. Change the font size to this, change the color to this, which makes you think you're learning, but he says he's not. I've been at it for three months and I don't think I would know how to build a basic web page uh, on my own. I really need a mentor to help push me along. What would you advise to really start the learning process? So what you are dealing with is very common, very common, so it's not you. The problem with so many of these boot camps and free online tutorials are put together by people, A, who they're never in the industry a lot of the times, and B, don't know how to teach. So that's a deadly combination. So you have somebody here who's been spending three months on this. You can't even build a web page yet. This is ridiculous. You should be able to build a web page within the first day or two. Simple web page, but you should be able to build a web page if you're taught properly. Again, the big problem with so many of these courses is that they're, they're not teaching properly. They don't have any teaching skill. It's just a fact of the matter. So let me answer a few questions. A, if you're 55, can you transition to become a professional web developer, a web designer, coder? Yes, you're not gonna be getting jobs at startups, typically, unless you have some deep background, some other profession. So let's say you're an accountant, or a lawyer, or a bookkeeper, or a dentist, or something, I don't know. Uh, let's say you have another profession, you've had enough, and you wanna do something else. Yes, then going into coding, makes can make a lot of sense because you can leverage your previous career combine it with the coding knowledge and you can build something interesting for example you could be uh, let's say you were a lawyer or maybe just a legal assistant you could use those that background in, in your legal work to be able to to create custom solutions websites and blogs and marketing programs for uh, independent lawyers legal firms etc because you have that domain knowledge, which I talk about all the time, which is so important. So that would work out pretty good. In terms of learning very quickly, you just gotta find a good course. I'm gonna to toot my own stuff, check them out. I have uh, self-paced learning courses where you're actually building real things. I also have my mentoring program where you get the live support and the mentoring, so you can check that out if you want. But yeah, you wanna get a mentor, but here's the thing, general rule, you don't wanna get caught up in tutorial hell. You don't wanna be forever doing tutorials like changing font color sizes and so forth. You want to be building things. You want to be building things. You got to get in the ring, you got to fight. And there's a bit of a leap of faith there. That's where the mentorship comes in. So if you get stuck on something, the mentor can come in and, and intervene and speed up the process. So since you're first starting out, what you want to do is you want to spend a little time every day writing code. So you don't want to change font colors and stuff. You want to start off you gotta think of a web page like building a house. So you wanna start off with the frame, right? You don't start off uh, picking the, the uh, I don't know, the marble for the countertops. What you wanna do is you wanna build the frame. Same thing with the website. So sit down right now, just break out the HTML, the code editor, and then build your very basic web page with your, your, you know, your HTML, your header, your head, your body, then put in some of the alt tags in the, in the header, and then put in a couple paragraphs, maybe an HTML table, just something simple. Don't try to get in there and build a fully responsive three column website from scratch. Start off with something very, very simple like that. Just a basic web page with some paragraphs, maybe throw in some hyperlinks. Uh, one of the things that trips people up in uh, is directory structures that has everything to do with hyperlinks. Do that and you'll be in a good position, I think. You start from there, and then slowly, slowly, you build up. Another thing to consider is that when you are doing any web stack training course, whether it be front end, back end, full stack, it has to cover a lot more than just the code. There's much more to learn. So for example, if you're doing front end, you have to understand the web browser, you have to understand how the browser processes codes, you have to understand the request response cycle, servers versus clients, um, hosting, 
uh, domain names, uh, registration of domain names, different types of hosting solutions, different types of server solutions, why would you use one or the other? These are all fundamental to uh, being a professional uh, web designer, web uh, developer, web professional. Very important stuff, especially if you're getting into the career, uh, into, the, uh, into the career late in life in your mid-50s. Um, this is, you have to know for a very simple reason. You have to learn this stuff because as an older uh, fellow jumping into the game, chances are you're going to be working with a lot of small businesses, medium-sized businesses, but a lot of small businesses. You may get yourself into freelance, which I highly rec recommend because when you freelance, it's a little slower to start up, but once you get it going, you're going to make a lot more money for your time. You're going to have a lot more freedom in terms of when you work, with whom you work, what technologies you work with. So I highly recommend that, especially if you get into your mid-50s. Uh, as a side note, if you're jumping into uh, your mid-50s, new career, and uh, the younger you start this, the better. Uh, start eating natural foods. Uh, uh, get in shape. Start exercising every day. Start with walking. You know, start walking maybe 5,000 steps a day. Get it up to 10,000. Start lifting weights. Trust me, your, cogn your cognitive capacity and your uh, intellectual capacity, cognitive capacity, same thing. Uh, your mood will be better, your energy levels will be better, you'll be able to function much better. I can tell you, I, you know, I'm getting up there too. And uh, exercise and nutrition, uh, lifestyle have a huge impact in terms of uh, my uh, performance, that's for sure. So what you should do is break out a code editor, VS Code, Sublime Text, doesn't really matter and just actually start building web pages. Start building simple, simple web pages, text only. Maybe insert an image tag. Forget about the layouts. Don't worry about CSS right now, for, except for maybe simple things like text color changes and that kind of stuff. And build up from there. But the key is you got to start building things. You got to get away from the tutorials. This is something I do, again, in my courses, my boot camp, it, well, boot camp, mentoring program where we, uh, I get people through the foundations of the coding as quickly as possible, but they're all, we're building things right away. In fact, you're building your first web page within, within the first day. Uh, it's very important. And you don't want to be perpetually learning, getting caught in tutorial how you're getting caught into that. So that's the problem we have. We have the problem of too much choice these days. We have too much choice, too much selections in terms of course material and resources. This is something that's been uh, proven and shown in psychology. If you have more than three choices, people's mood goes down. It, it's too much, too many choices. People get anxious, they can't make a decision. It's not cool. So now you have this, uh, this time in our lives where we have an abundance of information. We have so much information out there. But the problem is, as, as I said earlier, we don't know what's good what's well, bad information, if the people presenting information are at, are at all competent. That's a huge issue, whether or not they know how to teach as well. There's competence in the subject and there's also competence in the ability to teach. These are two separate things. Um, it's a problem. So what am I talking about when, in terms of competence in the subject? You know, I hear so much BS being thrown out there by young nerds, but they haven't been in industry. So there's a lot of stuff they're spewing out there, and a lot of times they spew it out wrong. Like for example, I remember when the mood out there was all about scale. Oh, you gotta build your app so they can scale. And there was such huge emphasis on this, such huge emphasis on it. And I was one of the few voices who said, that's like one of the last things you should be concerned about as a uh, developer, a coder, whether your app can scale. It's so unimportant. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Why is it so unimportant? Because 99.99999% of you will never, ever be involved in a project where scale is an issue, where caching is an issue and all this kind of stuff. Load balancing is an issue. This is such a specialized area of development and to waste any time on that is such a waste of time. And here's the other thing, when it comes to scaling apps, being one of the few YouTubers apparently who's actually built apps that had to scale to a certain extent, it's not about caching layers, all that stuff. It's about your database access. 
99% of performance issues has to do with how you design your database tables, how you, uh, how you set up your database queries. That's the game. That's the game. Having good indexes on the tables, on the database tables, not all these other BS things that they talk about. So anyway, that's one aspect of it is you have these people who don't know the industry. So when you look at any courses, any programs, you ask teacher, what have you done in the real world? Because a bad teacher could lead you down these tutorial hell garden paths where you're learning all the stuff that you will never use and has no importance in the real world of development. I first saw this actually in martial arts. I remember I was in an MMA gym. I was in one of the gyms that George St. Pierre, uh, world champion, he trained in. And uh, so we had one of these MMA coaches. Uh, he was a Thai boxing coach. I put him in air quotes, coach. He was horrible. So he had learned some Thai boxing for a few years. He did two or three amateur fights. He lost them all horribly, horribly. And he just didn't know how to fight. He was not a good fighter, far from it. So he decided, since I'm, I'm a terrible fighter, I'm going to coach people. So he would get uh, these, uh, and he looked pretty good. He could kick, you know, and he looked like, ooh, he could kick, and he looked pretty good, with, you know, punches. To the uneducated eye, he looked, he was in good shape. It looked like he could throw. But to the educated eye, he was horrible. His, ter his technique was terrible. Often, so anyway, he would train fighters, train them. He would train them to lose. They would go fight and they would lose as well. Of course, he's a loser. He made losers. And um, it's hard, it's, well, it's almost impossible for a beginner to be able to know whether this particular teacher is going to train you how to fight properly because you don't know how to fight. So how can you possibly judge whether or not this individual is going to teach you how to fight properly? Now, my teacher happened to have a stellar record, my boxing coach, 77-2 as a, as a boxer, which is unbelievably good record. So he actually taught us how to, how to punch properly, how to, how to move, how to, uh, how, to, you know, how, to, how to box. So we could tell, those who trained with him could tell that this guy was horrible. But that's because we were trained properly. We had a coach had an amateur record, 77-2. When I was a young kid and I was wanting to learn how to fight, I would go to different schools, see different teachers, and who would I would pick? I would find out who the damn champions were. Now, who's the champion? In, you know, in this town, do I take this loser school here where this guy has never been in any fights, and he tells you he's fantastic, versus this person over there who's been in 77 fights and has won all of them. Oh, he's been in 79 fights, and he won 77 out of 79 fights at 77 too. That's a crazy good record. So you figure, this guy knows what he's talking about. And I can tell you, when it comes to even something as seemingly as trivial and simple as boxing, there's a lot of complexity in that, a lot of subtleties that make all the difference between those who win and those who lose. It's the same thing for coding, by the way. There's a lot of subtleties knowing how to write good code versus crap code that make a huge difference as to whether or not the project will be successful. <laughs>